Hi, writers. Welcome to episode 64 of How Do You Write? I'm Rachel Heron, and I am so glad that you are here. Today, we talk to a friend of mine named Chloe Adler, who is just a darling and a spitfire and is taking the world by storm. And you're going to love listening to her. She's adorable and fun and smart and all of the good things. So um, you'll enjoy that interview. And just a little update on my end. Uh, it's turned cold. If you're looking at me on the videos um, on YouTube or Facebook, um, I'm wearing a sweater. I'm wearing a little scarf because it's cold in my house, which is such a fantastic fine thing the fog has rolled into california and it is um chasing some of the smoke out uh, we are they're saying that some of the fires are being handled so some of that terror is gone um it's just nice to be cold again and of course as writers it is the law that uh fall is our favorite season and i'm going to guess that there's very good odds that fall is your favorite season too. And why is that? Because of the smell of pencils. Because it is time for office supplies, for stationery, for back to school, even though as writers, we're always in school. We always have homework. We're stuck with that. And it's a it's a wonderful thing to be stuck with. Um, but yeah, I love fall. I love the way the trees change. I just love everything about it. So I hope that you're enjoying fall where you are, unless you're in the Southern Hemisphere, um, in which case, welcome to spring. I hope your flowers are lovely. Uh, let's see what else is going on. Oh, big news. Um, you may have seen this in my writer's email or have seen it on social media, but my Venice 2018 retreat is open. Uh, 10 or 11, I think, of the 15 slots have been filled. So it's going fast. Um, you should come. Let me tell you why. Because I love Venice so much. The only thing I love more than Venice is teaching and leading workshops in writing creativity and writing bravery and writing daring do. So uh, if you come to Venice with me, you get the mornings full of writing creative prompts, being together. Um, it's super exciting. I have to say that a bunch of people are coming back from the last trip, which says something, I think, about the retreat that they would want to redo the whole thing. So um, the hotel is great. That's included in the cost. Uh, you can get all the details at rachelherron.com slash, oh, what is it? Venice 2018. Very simply, Venice 2018 come over there and join if you can it is women's only um for this one so i'm sorry men if you want to come perhaps next time uh this time it's for the ladies and it's in venice and we're going to have a marvelous time so jump on that if you are curious about it um otherwise i have been writing like a fiend i've been revising like a fiend uh, probably up to 80 or 85,000 words revised on the thriller, which is fantastic. Of course, now it sucks because I'm getting into the point where I left it with no ending because I couldn't figure out an ending. So I'm writing my way there, which has actually been super fun and exhilarating. And I've just been hitting it hard and getting her done. And it feels great. And I've been working on the memoir project. Um, my memoir class at Stanford is going smashingly. I have fantastic students. And I just feel very, very grateful to this life. And so happy that I can do this, that I can talk to you, that I could get on this podcast and talk to you about writing and talk to people about how they write. And I want to thank uh, new patron, uh, new patrons for on Patreon. We have Ryan J. Pelton, who was on the show last week. I hope that you enjoyed his interview and I know that you did. Um, thanks, Ryan. And also Katie Taylor, I want to give a special shout out. She sent me uh, one of the nicest emails I think I've ever gotten in my whole life. And Katie, I hope you don't mind that I share that you said that listening to this podcast um, has made you go back to that unfinished manuscript as you realize that, yes, we all kind of hate writing, but we all love it so much that the hatred doesn't stick. Just kind of rolls off daily as we go back to it again and again. And um, that all of our drafts suck 
the first time, the first draft. Um, none of us are as good as we want to be. And yet we can keep writing. We can keep going. So um, Katie, thank you so much for your email. It really, really, really meant the world to me. I said that to you in the return, but I hope that you know that. So thank you for that. Thank you for your patronage. If anybody else wants to support on Patreon, I'm at patreon.com slash Rachel. You get cool things like texts a few times a week at the $3 level. Um, you also get the satisfaction that you are truly a patron of the arts in the old fashioned way. And that is so awesome. And I thank you all mightily and heartily. So I don't think I have too much else to catch you up on. So I'm going to jump right into the interview with Chloe Adler. Please enjoy. And I wish you this week very happy, very productive writing to you. All right. Well, I could not be more pleased to welcome today my friend Chloe Adler. Hello, Chloe. Hi, Rachel. Thank you. So glad to have you on. Let me give you a little introduction. Chloe Adler lives in foggy Northern California, and I'm going to correct that to say smoky California right now because it is terrible up here, under an assumed name with her dead fish Larry and a bouncy bunny rabbit named Fred. Prior to her infamous writing career, Chloe was an overachiever, amassing a slew of unimpressive letters after her name. The trouble is that the five people who know what the letters mean don't really care. Her first paranormal romance series, Love on the Edge, with a genre mishmash guaranteed to rotate heads, is available on Amazon. And the first book in her next series comes out at the end of October. When not writing, Chloe spends her time collecting striped socks. And can you please tell us about the dead fish, Larry? Dying to know. Yeah, well, uh, I guess that's pretty... <laughs> you know, the spot. I love it. So I think that that came from when I was a child, I carried around dead things. and In your in pockets or in your hands? So in first grade, which apparently this was not cool, our teacher had us dissect animals. And so, yes. And so we dissected a fetal pig in first grade. Oh, my God. And we dissected a chicken, and I carried around a chicken heart. And every night I put it in a glass of water next to my bed. <laughs> that is super awesome and gross. Yeah, it's really gross. I know. <laughs> so is, know. La is Larry still hanging around? Well, no, but just the idea of, okay. you know, right. having the dead fish in the bowl next to my bed. I think that's where it came from. Yes. Yes, I could, I could just see this little skeleton floating there like in the cartoon. <laughs> yeah. Well, you have been having an exciting time with publishing lately. I've been watching what you're doing, and it's been super exciting to watch. And, and you're being, it seems like to me, from the outsider's perspective, that you're being very productive. So I would love to talk to you about your process and where you have gotten to in this game. So can you tell us um, when you write? What, what is the best time of day for you to write, and where do you do most of your writing? So I write whenever I can. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm one of those. I wish I was a morning writer and I'm not, but I was thinking that probably around 10 a.m. or 1030 is ideal and I can't always do what's ideal. So I, I do have a part-time day job. And so I basically write whenever I'm able to. Sometimes I'm only able to write for an hour in between things. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes I have to write it at night. So and where, ideally, where do you love to write? I love to write right here in my yeah. living room. Yeah? yeah. It's my favorite place to write. I did. I had a, a nightmare upstairs neighbor situation. And so I, and I was listening to one of your podcasts. And I was listening to somebody who said that they go to uh, like a mm, working co-space. Mm -hmm. So I signed up for one. There's one near me. And I go there sometimes. And awesome. It's yeah. So do you have a certain number of days you can go or can you go anytime you want? Yeah. So really, I'm only supposed to go two days a month because that's what I pay for. But she lets me go one day a week. Oh, that's cool. So. I have really, really thought about those. I'm always dithering, but I have my library right now and that's going great. So that's really cool. I'm a little bit jealous. I've been to a couple of those places and they're awesome. They're they, so it, cool. Yeah. It, it's really great, but I, I do prefer writing at my house. I just yeah. do. And then I did the car thing because you told me about the car thing on a podcast. So. I love writing in the car. Yeah. <laughs> and what is your biggest challenge when it comes to writing? 
So my biggest challenge is editing. And we've talked, we've talked about, about that, that mm -hmm. a lot. So it's, it's really hard for me. It's like pulling teeth. I hate, I just hate it. I love writing. I love getting the words down and I hate to edit. And yeah, that's it. If it helps, if it helps some people who say that change in the future, or this may be the way you will always be. I think I'll always hate first drafts. I mean, ugh, ugh, hate but you it. said it's getting better, it right? Is getting, and that's getting better for me too. It's, the last few books have been so much more fun first draft wise. And I think we all kind of expand and maybe someday mm -hmm. you'll be passionate about revision. I hope so. Cause it's so fun. What is your biggest, what is your biggest joy in writing? So it's, it's the actual writing. Um, the, the actual first draft is, and, and I was, you know, downloading the characters is huge. It's a really big part of the, of the joy and why I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. So, and I don't know how that happens, what the process is, what, you know, I don't know, but that is huge for me. And obviously if I didn't have that, I wouldn't be able to do any of this, but the, the first draft is where I really, and, and I was thinking, you know, drinking my tea. Yeah and writing the first draft that's the best that's the best like I, I just I would love to just sit in and that was my goal a couple years ago just be able to sit or stand I'm standing right now my, my new standing desk uh and drink tea all day and write that's heaven I have look at right right here I have my um my little teapot Aww. that I'm, I'm only Absolutely. half halfway done with, but yes, I absolutely feel you. What is the absolute best or worst writing advice you've ever been given? So I don't really like to talk about worst, or maybe I don't want to remember it, but <laughs> best writing advice came from a person in our group, in our Romance Writers of America group, where you and I met. Yeah. And she, I wish I could remember who it was because I have no idea. So I was writing my first book, which is not published and might never be, I don't know, under the bed. First three are under the bed. But she said to me one day after I'd been attending for two years, every month, mm -hmm. she said, what are you writing? And I said, oh, I'm working on my first book. And she said, how long have you been working on it? I said, 15 years. And which, wow. is, yeah, <laughs> which is true, 15 years. And she said, why don't you just finish it? And it, she didn't say it like mean, like that just came out really mean, but she said it really, <laughs> she said it really strongly, just finish it. And I'm the, the kind of person that needs strangers. If mm -hmm. you're my friend, you can't do this to me, but strangers, I need them to tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. And this is, it's been since I was a little kid, I was a gymnast and I needed the teacher to be like, just do it. Mm -hmm. So I boil that down to just do it. And then she said to me, NaNoWriMo, which I had never heard of, is next month. This was in October, yeah, several years ago. And she said, NaNoWriMo is next month. Just finish the damn book. And that's what I needed. I really did. And I did it. I wish you could remember who that was so that you could thank them, you know? That's so know, cool. Maybe they'll I listen know. to this and tell you that they were, that they were the one. But NaNoWriMo was the way that got me out of my stuck place, too. That was 2006. Uh -huh. NaNoWriMo was the first time I'd ever finished a book instead of just spending years not finishing one. So right. NaNoWriMo's right. coming, people. And it's next month. Yeah. yeah. Are you going to do it again? I am. I just signed up. Me, too. Yep. Me, too. Awesome. Oh, good. Can, can you share a quick craft tip of any sort with us? Yeah, wait. I wrote that down. Let me look that up. <laughs> Uh, craft tip. Oh, yeah, because, you know, I don't really have one. But I I guess I feel like it's don't limit yourself mm -hmm. and try everything. So I, if, a lot of times, the thing that was working for me yesterday won't be working for me today. And when I do it today, it's not working. So then I try something else. And then if that doesn't work, I try something else. And I'm like that with everything. I'm like that with organization where I'm like, oh, I'm into the bullet journal. That's my thing. And then three days later, I hate the bullet journal. <laughs> and now all of a sudden I'm into Google Calendar. So I just, so I think that that's, that would be my tip is just try everything. And, and, and for me, it's just, it's important not to be stuck on one thing. 
So just be malleable. I think that is what one of the many things I like about you and how we've connected because we both have that passion to try everything and learn everything and absorb everything. And if it doesn't work, that's fine. We'll do something else. Right. Not a problem. Right. Super cool. When you have a really dark self-doubt or those really black days, how do you deal with that? What Do you have any tips for that? So the thing that I started doing at the beginning was writing my editor and I didn't realize what I was doing, but I would write my editor these long emails about how I am the worst writer on the planet <laughs> and I'm quitting. And I would say stuff like, please just be honest with me and tell me how bad I am <laughs> because you know, you know, she sees the first draft. Right, so right. I'm like, look, I suck. I'm throw I would actually send her emails that would say I'm throwing in the towel. Oh my god. I would say, I'm yep. throwing in the towel. I'm done. I will never write again. Blah blah very dramatic. And she would always write back you're being too hard on yourself and you know you're you're fine like she never says I'm great. <laughs> <laughs> which is which is good and I actually know I'm not great so that works out cuz I'd be like now she's lying. Right. And, and then you can't trust her. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But she was always really helpful. And then now I don't do that anymore. Now I eat. So <clears throat> there are two foods that I didn't like about three, four weeks ago. And now I love them. One is avocados and the other are potatoes. Okay, that's <laughs> random and weird. I know. <laughs> I am random and weird. So now I eat potatoes. So <laughs> <laughs> that has so never been said on the show before, but I, I really like it. Yeah. yeah. So whenever I'm really dark, like, oh, everything sucks. I make potato salad and the key is truffle oil. Oh, yum. Yeah. The key is truffle oil. And then my new favorite potato chips are John Jackson or Johnson Honest potato chips. Jackson, Johnson, I don't know. Um, I wrote them down, but because they're all natural, I'm like one of those crazy health food people and they have only coconut oil and salt. But they're really, really, really good. Mm. And so yeah, anything potatoes. <laughs> I absolutely love that. <laughs> okay, and on on really bad days, if you couldn't do this job anymore and you couldn't do your day your part time day job, what profession would you choose for fun? So for fun, I would be a circus performer. Oh, I can believe that. I can yeah. totally believe that. Yeah. Are you a circus artist? Do you do that kind of flying from yeah. the trapeze? Yeah. Oh, yeah. What is that like? Yeah. It's it's amazing. I so I don't do I don't do flying trapeze. I do static. Mm -hmm. It's called static trapeze. And so I just do tricks in the ropes on the trapeze and in the ropes. And it's a lot of upper body strength and a lot of um yeah, it's a lot of skill. I've been doing it for seven years, and I love it more than anything, but it's just my workout. I'm not professional. I will never, ever perform, ever in my life. I actually have a trapeze right here in my living room. Oh, my gosh. Um, but I, yeah, uh, if I could, I would, that I would love to actually, you know, have started when I was 20 years old instead of when I was four or something, and uh, do that for a living. Okay, so that would be to be honest, I'm 45 and I've wanted to do that. And there's a trapeze school, circus school in Oakland. Do you, but don't don't you think I can't? I'm I'm like four times your little teeny size. Like I would kill myself. It doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter. So I so I started at so I'm 51. So I started at what? you are not. Wow. Yeah, I am. Yeah, I okay. am. Yeah, I am. So I started. <laughs> So I started at 42. I don't know. I can't do the math. No, I started 45. No, I started 45. Seven okay. years, 44, 45. Yeah. Yeah. And I knew nothing. And I was, it was really hard. And I just took a lot of uh, strengthening. They have the specific classes to help you get into it. Um, I can't remember what it's called. Intro to Aerial, I think. And then I took that for six months. And I've gone to the trapeze. There's two in Oakland. Oh, I didn't know that. Trapeze Arts and... That's the one I know about. Yeah. That's what, I've been to that one. It's really good. There's another one. I'll remember it and tell you later. But 
I really liked that school. And I started, I didn't know what I was doing. I had no upper body strength. I couldn't do anything. And I did it anyway. And you build it up. And this girl that I met at Burning Man had told me, you know, it takes six months. And that's what it took me until I was able to get on the trapeze and still not do a lot, but enough. And then you just, you know, you keep going. Oh, how cool. Okay. You're yeah. inspiring. I'm going to do it. Yeah. It's not where I expected yeah, this, this interview to go, but I'm totally going to do it. And maybe other listeners will too. Let's, let's all get on the trapeze. I hope so. It's so fun. And the other thing is if you take an intro to aerial class and you find out, oh, I really like silks better. I really like straps better. I really like the rope better. You can do any of it. I have a couple and friends who I, are really into the silks, and I just think it is so gorgeous. If anybody doesn't amazing. know what we're talking about, just Google. You should see this on the YouTubes. Yeah. On the YouTubes. <laughs> so I, I, that's why I started. I started for the silks. <sighs> okay. And I, they're, number one, they're really hard. Yeah. And number two, I really fell in love with my trapeze teacher because she's this little tiny, like, rrr, bulldog Russian woman that tells me what to do. And I love it. <laughs> you do like that. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That's awesome. Okay. And what is the best book you've read recently and why did you love it? Okay. Yeah. I wrote this down too. So the best, I, I read a lot. I read every single day every night before I go to sleep. And the best recent book, so I, I picked two. So one is a mainstream and it's Ready Player One by oh, Ernest Klein. That was great. I loved that. So good. I loved it. It's coming out and in a movie I soon too. It. Right. Which is why I read it. Exactly. Yes. And I really liked all the 80s references, even though I really grew up in the 70s. Um, <laughs> and I just thought it was fun. I thought yeah. it was just really fun. And then I read, uh, I wrote it down, The Succubus, what is she calling it? The Succubus Bargain, Ooh. which is a serial. It's by Ella Frost. Okay. And the reason I'm bringing that up is she's an indie. And so I am my new, I have two new series coming out and they're both Reverse Harem. So I'm reading a lot of Reverse Harem. I don't know and- what Reverse Harem is. is. Is it what I'm guessing that the female has a lot of males okay just like it sounds yeah awesome <laughs> yeah a female has a lot of males and usually has sex with all of them though that is not really the driving force so the driving force is that there's one man that will um, massage her feet there is one that will uh, cook for her mm-hmm. there's one that will whatever they each have a different role and mm-hmm. it doesn't have to be men it just that's where it's going right now and it's a newer genre as in two years old Uh uh-huh and it started in anime Uh, okay yeah awesome so yeah so this uh succubus bargain reverse harem cereal and i don't read cereals is is really fun so i what i really like about is i really like the writing she's really she's a really good writer and I really like the characters and the development and, you know, that all the men have something totally different and they're demons. And so, yeah. Super fun. I'm going to put that in the show notes. And that sounds like something I would like to check out and yeah. investigate a little bit. Thank you for that. Good. Okay. Now, Good. where can we find you? What can you tell us about? Um, what should we be looking up for for you? So you can find me at ChloeAdler.com. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, there's links to the Twitter and the Facebook and the, yeah, that's that's it. Twitter. Well, I have an Instagram, but I don't post there much. And, yeah, I do have a book coming out, hopefully, at the end of October. You know how it is when you're self-published and you can push it if you want. But I'm hoping to have it at the end of October or maybe the beginning of November. And then another one, a serial that I'm writing reverse harem serial that will start hopefully in December. Awesome. Yeah. And tell us about your series that's out right now. That is the uh, love on the edge. Yes. So it's, it's a little weird. I was checking it out. I haven't read it yet, but it looks awesome. I was just looking at some of the reviews and your, um, and your write up. It looks like you. you have a lot going on in there. Yeah. Yeah. I have a lot going on in there. Yeah. So it's, um, it's paranormal and it's a witch family, three sisters. And then the way that I think about it in my head and talk about it is, so there's a, a nymphomaniac witch and she has a, she has two roommates, a vampire stripper and a gay shapeshifter. 
and then they all have sex with each other and basically everybody else. Um, <laughs> and that and that is <laughs> and that is integral integral to the story. It's part of the plot. It's not just there for fun. Right. And 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 I didn't. It wasn't my idea. Well, obviously it was my idea, but it wasn't my thought to write kind of highly sexual books, but that's what happened. The characters wanted that. And I am just a vehicle. So that's what I did. Um, and then, so the first book is about Sadie, the nymphomaniac, which sister, who's the first one who downloaded. And then the second book is her older sister, Chris, who's a virgin and it's her self discovery. And then the third book is Jared, uh, the gay shapeshifter roommate. And then the fourth book is Burgundy, the vampire stripper. And uh, Burgundy, Sadie is polyamorous and bisexual. And Burgundy is bisexual and polyamorous. And kind of, um, it's, an, it's an interesting an interesting story. I, I'm, yeah, it sounds super fun, and I really and you've said it twice now. I like how you say um, downloaded for a character. It's like it's like when you're downloading it in a game or something. Is that is that what you mean by that? Yeah. Does that that doesn't happen to you? Definitely not. No, no. I can write an entire book and usually do without really knowing my characters until the end, and then I. I really bring out their characters in the revision because by then I know them. But if I could download it ahead of time, I mean, I work on it. I work on my characters, but they, they never work out the way I think they're going to ever. Wow. No, it's horrible. Well, I don't know. I think that's kind of cool in a way because you're not, I, I feel like I'm kind of confined. I have like a, I have a framework that I can't sometimes move how long does move it, past or change. How long does it take you to get a character like that to, to, a second. What? Yeah. Yeah. I Sometimes I think I'm crazy. And it <laughs> almost always, but not always, almost always happens in the shower. <laughs> I, would, so, I would live in the shower. Yeah. Well, you know, and it's funny because I was listening to this webcast. Michael Hyatt did a free webcast. And he said that a lot of times we get really good ideas in the shower because we're relaxed. Mm -hmm. Yep. What? So crazy. Yep. That's so yeah. awesome. Okay, well, I'm gonna yeah. hope for I'm gonna hope for good things for my shower. I'm gonna thank you very much for the time you've spent with us. Thank Thanks you for your it. awesome oh. energy, and I will look forward to seeing you at our local RWA chapter. Yay! So. Thank you, Rachel. I love you, and I love your podcast. So I'm so excited to be here. Oh, I love you back. I'm thrilled. Thank yeah, you so yeah. much. Thanks, Chloe. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye. Bye.